I'm Kel Kellogg, and my hybrid lead core system has brought lead core trolling back into the spotlight for trout and salmon anglers all over the country. If you'd like the world's best lead core trolling rod, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up one of my iconic bright yellow lead core rods today. You won't regret it because you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Fish on the fly. Yeah, baby. Wow. Man, that fish meant it. Holy mackerel. Oh, he's still there. Oh, yeah. Woo. Oh, that is a nice fish. That's a that's one for the stringer if I can get him in. Come here, baby. Yes. Oh, that's a nice fish. Look at that studly rainbow. That's a nice fish. Jumped all over that orange fly, way back in his mouth. He really wanted it, man. He hit like a ton of bricks, put up a great fight, and jumped all over the place. He's gonna have orange meat, and uh, man, that's gonna just be an awesome fish to eat, to smoke, whatever. Scott Kellogg here. I just got a question about trout fishing rods, and uh, it's a recurring question, so I grabbed the camera, ran down here in the backyard, and I'm gonna answer this question on video. And you know, since it's a recurring question, I, th I think this is a question that's on a lot of guys' minds. Some of them reach out, some of them don't. But uh, the question was, guy asked me if he could run lead core line on one of my signature trout and salmon rods one of my downrigger rods and the answer is yes and no we'll get into that rod in a second but i get these questions all the time about lead core about downrigger rods about lead core rods stuff like that I'm not trying to sell you tackle if you want to buy my tackle fantastic we love that um i'm going to talk about the properties of the rods and what i want in a rod if you got a favorite lead core rod good for you that's great um but i just want to talk about the properties and kind of give my thoughts on the subject. Lead core rods versus downrigger rods, different applications, stuff like that. So here is my signature series yellow lead core rod. If you've watched the channel much, you've seen this rod in action. I run my hybrid lead core rig on it. It works very well. The thing to know, there's, it's actually one of my, my rainbow fisheye pro dodgers. They look awesome. Plug for my dodger. But anyway, the thing with my lead core rod is, is it's six foot six. Um, definitely this rod is aimed at the small boat fraternity, the kayakers, the guys in the small aluminums, guys in canoes. You know, guys, in my experience, guys in big North Rivers, they can absolutely run lead core successfully. Um, but typically, those guys are not interested in lead core. They want to run their downriggers um, and, and, and they don't know it. They're missing out on a lot of fish. But the bottom line is, I geared these lead core rods for the smaller boat guys and that's why we came in at six foot six for ease of fighting fish, netting fish, and transport in a smaller boat. So there you go. Six foot six. Look at the action on this rod. It's got some play in the tip. If you're going to fish for trout and salmon, you have to have that play in the tip for a few different reasons. You got to have it to fight, you know, cushion the fight of the fish especially on a lead core rod because if you're running lead core with a fluoro top shot and a braid you know backing you have a very low stretch rig i mean you're getting direct drive from the rod tip to the hook in the fish's mouth so you need that cushioning in the rod tip on the lead core rod but beyond that there is a lot of power in this rod and it's not just power to fight fish um, you know, we all want power in a rod when we're out fishing because we're always trying to catch a big fish and, and that's got to be part of the consideration. I might be catching, you know, planted trout after planted trout after planted trout, but what happens on that one day in your fishing career when the 11 pound brown grabs that lure, you got to have that power for big fish. But for my lead core rod, the power is there you know, in large part to deal with the weight of the lead core. You pick up a piece of 15 pound lead core line, it doesn't feel like anything. 
But when it comes time to, to, to change my lead core and I strip all three colors off and I roll it up into a little tight ball, it's pretty heavy. Um, I've never weighed one, but it's an ounce, ounce and a half of, you know, lead weight. So the rod needs to be up to that challenge. So that's why I, that's why I sell these yellow lead core rods. That's why I run them. They're heavier than a downrigger rod. They still have a nice soft tip but it's backed up fairly quickly with a lot of power and a lot of backbone. And I gotta say, this combo works very well. Having said that, I fished my lead core rig, my hybrid three color rig, off of standard trout rods for a long time. And I did very well, but my rods were overloaded. You know, part of the backbone of the rods was being sapped up by the weight of the lead core. And by doing that, I lost fish fighting ability. So let me grab my downrigger rod here. The, the action of this rod, now this rod, it is meant to be either used for top lining or fished out of a downrigger. Um, it is seven foot, six inches long. And hopefully, let me see here. I can't see with the glasses too well. But it is bright out here. There we go, okay. So, so if you look at the action on this rod, it's still a fast action rod, fairly fast, kind of medium fast. I do not like a super slow action downrigger rod. It's got enough play to load, load in the downrigger. It's got enough play to, you know, cushion the fight of a fish. Um, but it is backed up by backbone. If I get a big Mac or a big rainbow or a big brown on here, I have a lot of power. I could land a striper on this rod but it is a much lighter rod than the lead core rod. Now, if I was running lead core on this rod, it would be loaded like that, you know, something like that, a lot of the time. So I lose a lot of the play of the rod with the rod just being loaded against the lead core. So the bottom line is, this rod is superb for top lining, for downrigger fishing. It has a lot of power. It has that medium fast action but it is much lighter than the downrigger rod in general. Those downrigger rods, when you start getting into the backbone, there's a ton of power. There's certainly more power than you're gonna find in my, you know, my downrigger and top lining rods, but uh, it's there for an important reason. This rod, this rod is intended to be used with monofilament, fluorocarbon, braided lines, stuff like that. It's not intended to be loaded up with an ounce and a half of, of lead core line. Now let's look at another downrigger rod here. I'll show you a rod that I don't really like. A lot of guys like these. I'm not a big fan. This is your Okuma SST, and I'm not throwing Okuma under the bus by any means. I've gotten rods like this, and, and softer rods than this from all the top name ma manufacturers. For some reason, when the top manufacturers think about kokanee and trout fishing on the west coast, they're thinking we catch fish this big all day, every day, and that's what we're fishing for. Look at this rod, it's beautiful, it's a nice rod, it's a mid-priced rod, but you start loading this rod up, and there, look at that, there is nothing there. I'm all the way down to the butt there. I'm still getting bend out of the rod. There is no power in this rod if you're out at Stampede and you hook a 15, 18, 20 pound Mackinac, you may land him, but you're not gonna land him because, because you did anything with the rod to steer the fish or move the fish. All you're gonna be able to do is keep the fish out of the snags and uh, hopefully the fish is, is gonna come you know, to the boat exhausted on his side and you're gonna kinda semi drag him over there because you have very little control with a rod like this. Fun for kokanee, cool to see you know snap out of the downrigger, but in my view, you're looking for trouble when you run light rods like this because you know, you hook a big fish, you got no control. And when you're getting a big fish near the kayak or near the boat, I, I've got to have some control. I want to be able to lead that fish away from a downrigger cable, lead that fish away from the motor. I just, I need some control. And you get that control with backbone and, and a fairly, you know, medium fast to fast action rod. That's where your control comes from. You gotta have enough cushion on a trout and salmon rod, you know, to, uh, to accommodate the fight, the head shakes of the fish, the fact that the fish have a soft mouth, and, and also the fact that more and more we're using lower and lower stretch line in our rigs. But you gotta have that softness in the tip. But you gotta have the backbone to take care of business when you need to take care of business. So anyway, that's my perspective on downrigger rods versus um, lead core rods, top lining rods versus lead core rods. Um, 
stuff like that pretty simple stuff yeah. if if you absolutely you know you don't have it in the budget to get the the lead core rod and you want to fish lead core part of the time you want to down rig part of the time by all means my seven foot yeah. six trout and salmon rods will do the job yeah. but if you're if you're talking about serious lead core trolling a dedicated lead core rod is going to yeah. do the job better so anyway once again, that's my perspective. I want to thank you guys for all the support you've given the channel and our, and our store over the past year. Um, subscribers to the channel are way up. We certainly enjoy doing this content. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do content like this. If you're looking for gear or rods or whatever, go on over to the fishhuntshoot.com website. Check out my store. And if you're not a subscriber yet, you know, jo join the party. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and you'll always know when I'm on here talking about fishing or whatever I'm talking about. I got a lot of videos planned this week, mostly about fishing, some about some other off the wall subjects. So anyway, I'm Cal Kellogg. I am signing off once again. Thanks for all the support. You be safe, healthy, happy, and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. Thanks a lot. Fish on.